Welcome to this session on uh, concept and theories of social structure. Well, you've often heard the word and often use the word structure also in several senses. In this session, I will begin with the whole concept of structure as such as it is used in general common parlance. From there we will move on to the concept of structure as it is used in the discipline of sociology and then we will go on to exploring or understanding what social structure is which is actually the subject matter of sociology. We will examine how Radcliffe Brown, how um, Edmund Leach, Ivan Spritchard and Levi Strauss discuss this concept of social structure. Okay. Now before we move on to all these deep theories on social structure propounded by very great sociologists, let's, let's start with the whole concept of structure or the meaning of the term structure. Well, the term structure itself comes from the Latin word structura which was used in the sense of construction. In fact, the term structure was first used in the context of construction. In common parlance, uh, the term structure is used to refer to say the way something is organized or it is built together or put together. Now, what is the example that comes to the mind? Uh, the first example that comes to the mind is the structure of human body, okay, in which different parts are put together, they are organized in the form of a very distinct, concrete, tangible structure. The other sense in which the term structure is used is in the sense of referring to a particular system, a particular pattern, a procedure or an institution. And what is the example that comes to the mind? The examples that come to the mind are, say, those of salary structure, okay, or say the class structure, caste structure. Because you see a pattern, a way of functioning, a procedure, okay. The third sense in which the term structure is used, it is used in the sense of referring to something that is made up of several parts that are put together in a particular way. And the example that uh, comes to mind is say a single storied building or even a multi storied building in which different stories combined to form a structure. Okay. Now it's very difficult I can understand to distinguish between these three senses in which I have just said the term structure is used in common parlance. Okay? Uh, but there is, there is a very slight distinction and surely these three senses very well overlap with each other. Okay? Now having understood the meaning of the term structure as such, let us explore. Let's take a step further and try and understand how sociologists use the term structure hmm? and, and let us also find out whether it is any different from the way it is com the term structure is used in common parlance. Hmm? Now sociologists use the term structure to refer to the way in which the different parts of an entity are interconnected so that the entity emerges as an integrated whole. Okay? And this entity which emerges as an integrated whole is divisible. It can be divided into its constituent parts. Okay? Now, having accepted this, hmm, what is it that, what are the main features that come out of this? Hmm? The main features that come out of this are interconnections, togetherness, a sense of wholeness, a sense of boundary maintenance mechanisms, right? These are the points that come to the mind, no? We may go on to explain this concept of structure that is used in sociology with the help of two analogies, okay? Analogy is the whole 
what does an allergy mean before we proceed an allergy is when we say this a is like b when when we establish a relationship like this we say we are talking of analogical relationship or we are talking of analogy okay now i can explain this concept of structure used in sociology through two analogies hmm? these two analogies were proposed by sir herbert spencer okay herbert spencer incidentally was also the person who used the term social structure for the first time hmm? now let's see what how he explains this concept of social structure and what are the analogies that he used to explain this concept of social structure the first analogy that he used was that of a house can you imagine a, a the the structure of a house is used to explain social structure well it's possible let's see how you see a struct a, a house is composed of what it's composed of several rooms several rooms in which different activities are performed so we have a bedroom okay we have a bedroom in which there is a bed and uh, it's used for sleeping maybe there is other furniture also but the major purpose to which the that particular room which we call the bedroom is used is for sleeping and for resting okay similarly we can have a, say a a study room okay where there could be a table there could be a computer there could be other or there could be a bookshelf and other furniture and items that would facilitate reading or where study is facilitated or promoted right and we call it the study room there may also similarly be another room in which say the deities are kept okay and we call it the worship room right these rooms are could be interconnected with each other through say galleries or verandas right and how are these rooms connected to the galleries and the verandas and to the outside world well it's through doors it's through windows and it's through the ventilators right now just imagine if you are to close the ventilator the window and the room and the door what happens the room emerges as an isolated entity yet we know that it is a part of the whole house it is autonomous when we close the rooms and the when we close the outlets it's it's an autonomous entity but even then it is an entity which is part of a larger entity called the house similarly the house is connected with the outside world through the doors and the windows and the ventilators and everything okay so a house also exists as an individual separate autonomous entity and also as a part of the larger uh, world it could be a village it could be a a rural um, an 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 urban, urban area okay now but surely the house may not be an isolated entity similarly just take a step further what are villages villages are aggregates of houses and each village maintains its uniqueness and its distinctiveness yet it has connections with the other uh villages and with other um spaces so when we say that the house the social structure can be compared or is analogous to a house what are the factors that uh, emerge the factors that emerge are that it it can be treated as an isolated entity at one level but when you look at it from a broader perspective it is part of a larger whole this same point comes out very clearly in the second analogy which was proposed by 
Sir Herbert Spencer and which formed the basis of a whole school of thought later which was called the functionalist school or the structural functional functionalist schools of which uh, Radcliffe Brown was the chief uh, scholar. Of course, uh, Malinowski, Durkheim, Parsons, Morton and several others. Now, what is this analogy of the organism? Well, Herbert Spencer said that society is like an organism and organism is like a society. Now, how is it possible? How can society be like an organism? Well, it can be like an organism because the, the principle or the main unit of a organism is the cell. Okay? What do we mean by the basic unit? I just said the basic unit of an organism is the cell. What is meant by this phrase basic unit? Well, the term basic unit means, the phrase basic unit means that beyond or the cell is the indivisible unit. Further, it cannot be broken down. Okay? A cell is the smallest unit through which, uh, a congregation of which gives rise to the organism. And I'll tell you how. Cells combine to form tissues. Tissues combine to form organs. Organs combine to form the organism. And similarly, the process is reversible, which means you can say that an organism is made up of organs. Organs are made up of tissues. Tissues are made up of cells. Hmm? Similarly, if you accept this, if you understand this, then when I say that society is like an organism and organism is like a society, one tends to think, well, in an organism, the basic indivisible unit is the cell. Okay? What is the basic indivisible unit of society? What could it be? Hmm? It could be the person. Now, this analogy was explained a great deal and in tremendous detail by an anthropologist called Radcliffe Brown who said that the principle or the basic unit of society is the socialized individual. Socialized individual. Now, what does this term socialized individual mean? Are we socialized individuals? Yes, because a socialized individual is one who has internalized, who has uh, accepted and in whom it runs what? The norms, the values, the beliefs and the way of meaningful social behavior. Right? Someone who has internalized this is a socialized individual. And a socialized individual is the basic unit of society. Okay? Socialized individuals combine to form groups. Right? Groups combine to form communities. Communities combine to form society. And the reverse also. So, but you must also understand that I have said society is like an organism. I did not say that society is organism. Hmm? If I say society is organism, then I am talking of homology. Okay? While I just said that we were talking of analogical relationship. Analogical relationship is one in which, as I said earlier, we say that A is like B, but A is not equal to B, certainly not equal to B. When I say A is B, huh, then it is homology. When I say that society is like an organism, an organism is like a society, it means that they are like each other. There is a distinction also between the two. And what is the distinction? The distinction is that a single cell can constitute an organism. 
we know amoeba is a single cell organism right but a single socialized individual cannot constitute society right that's a basic difference aristotle at one time had said that individual cannot stay alone an individual who can stay alone is either a beast or god right the basic um, unit is then a dyad in a society at least there must be at least two individuals right single individuals cannot survive cannot exist okay now surely then the next question that comes is there are two critical questions the first critical question is uh, what is the basic unit that may be understood as part that makes the structure is it the individual or is it the group and is social structure an empirical reality can it be observed can it be understood by the same means as are used in natural sciences and biological sciences well they say uh, ratcliffe brown whom i about whom i was just talking said that social phenomena can be investigated by methods that are similar to those methods that are used in natural and biological sciences you see when ratcliffe brown was propounding his theories of social structure and of society in a general sense that was the age in which science reason huh, were the guiding uh, principles right it was an age of reason age of science right so ratcliffe brown and uh, august comte as you know and you heard earlier and probably read also was the father of sociology august comte was someone who <coughs> propounded the concept of positivism and he said that <coughs> the methods of social science can be used profitably appropriately to understand um, sociology right of course there are lot of distinctions lot of differences between say the sciences and social sciences in a general sense and sociology in a particular sense right but that was the age of as they say positivism anyway in that age of positivism ratcliffe brown said that it was possible to study social phenomena by the same methods as are used by the natural and the biological <coughs> sciences now this has at least two or three implications right the first is that the subject matter is empirical it is subjected to observation right because in scientific methods <coughs> it's the method is empirical and the the subject matter is empirical you can see it and you can observe it so if we apply the same methods to social phenomena it also implies that the uh principles of science are also applicable which means that the subject matter of sociology should also be empirical and subject to observation this is the first implication the second implication is that it is possible to systematically investigate the structure of the universe or the structure of society just as we can observe the structure of say atoms in physics and molecules in chemistry the third implication is that just as in natural and biological sciences uh, we should be able to sociologists should be able to arrive at general laws of society after all in the sciences they do have general laws do you have the you have newton's law of motion you have uh, the law of gravity you have heisenberg's principle and several others when we accept that in sociology we use the same methods and the same principles apply so then we must also accept that we should be able to put forth general laws of society now 
having accepted this Ratcliffe Brown says social structures are just as real as are individual organisms okay then social uh, then Ratcliffe Brown creates a distinction or draws a distinction between the individual and the person and he says that the unit basic unit is the person and not the individual now what is the distinction that uh, Ratcliffe Brown creates or draws between the individual and the person we often use these terms uh, synonymously with each other well Ratcliffe Brown said that <coughs> an individual is determined or refers to the the, the the individual in his or her biological sense okay so you are one can as a male or a female and that's it an individual is a male or a female a person on the other hand is a complex of social relationships which means that he or she is a member of say the family so there is a whole um, complex of relationships that are involved uh, the person is a member of uh, is, is, is a citizen of the country the member is say a worker in a, in an organization it could be a factory it could be a university it could be a school or anywhere so the same individual which means that each individual is placed in a complex web of relationships and when this happens that we say that it is not an individual it is a person right when we say when we talk of a person we say then that a person each person occupies a place in the social structure right now Radcliffe Brown uses the term social personality to refer to the place of an individual of, of a person in the social structure right this is the concept of social personality in the context of social structure used by Ratcliffe Brown we just said that social structure is a part of uh, a person is a part of a of social structure which means then what is social structure and what is society does a collection of um, persons constitute social structure or society or is social structure and society something entirely different we know that the constituents of social structure is the or are the indi are uh, persons but just a collection of persons make a society no certainly not a society is not a haphazard collection of uh, persons rather it is an ordered or organized system in which the norms the values the beliefs the the past events control relationships between persons hmm? Ratcliffe Brown includes at least two aspects uh, in the framework of social structure first he says that all social um, the first aspect that he refers to are the social relations of a person with other persons okay so if we think of if we if we work out what are the major relationships of which an individual or of which a person is a part kinship structure for one, for instance so one includes here the position and the relationship of one person with the other in a kinship um, web work the other aspect of social structure that he talks about that Ratcliffe Brown talks about is the differentiation of individual and of classes according to their social roles okay 
Radcliffe Brown says that social structure is that concrete reality that comprises the set of actually existing relations at a given moment of time which link together certain human beings. Naturally, the thrust is on interrelationships, on linkages. And he says that it is possible to conduct direct observation on social structure. How? One can observe social relationships and the operation of so social relationships in practice. Right? Ratcliffe Brown also makes a distinction between social structure and structural form. The distinction is, he says that social structure continues over time. Okay? It's a complex webwork of relationship between and among persons in different contexts. So these relationships, he says, continue over time. This is what he meant by, this is what he referred to as dynamic continuity. Hmm? Now, from these relationships, Ratcliffe Brown said, it is possible to make abstractions. You understand? From the actual functioning operationalization of social relationships, it is possible to draw out abstractions or generalizations. And these abstractions or generalizations, Radcliffe Brown referred to as the structural form. Okay. So we go on to uh, a reworking of Radcliffe Brown, and we say that he proposed that uh, social structure is a reality, which means it is observable, it is empirical, it is subject to the same techniques of observation as the natural and biological sciences and he said that each branch of science deals with a certain kind or class of structure and then he seeks to discover the characteristics of all the structures of that kind and all structures of a particular kind are compared to arrive at their common characteristics. Now what is the whole purpose of comparing these structures? I, the last point says that all structures of a particular kind are compared to arrive at their common understanding, common characteristics. The, because the purpose, the whole purpose of all this is to arrive at the general laws of society. To arrive at generalizations that are applicable across cultures, across societies. Right? That was what I said is the basic aim or the objective of the positivist approach and of the functionalists. Now, this was one viewpoint of social structure where there was a lot of emphasis on uh, empiricism, on direct observation, on social relationships between persons. But there is also another viewpoint. The other viewpoint is that social structure refers to relations between groups. And this is what was proposed by Ivan Spritchard. Okay? Ivan Spritchard said that uh, instead of identifying a person as the basic unit of society, you see before we go on to even this, I may mention that Ivan Spritchard conducted his field work or his study was based on an in-depth research on the newer. Okay? Uh, newer is a community uh, which herded cattle and there were very strong territorial groups against that background and having studied the newer very closely Ivan Spritchard said that instead of identifying persons as the basic unit of social structure as was done by Ratcliffe Brown it was appropriate to view social structure in terms of groups which means that the basic unit of analysis is not the person but the group. Okay. 
Evans Richard says that by social structure then we mean relations between groups and which have a degree of consistency and constancy. Okay. Now what is important here? It is important to note two points. One is that the emphasis shifts from person to group and the group should be consistent and constant. It is for this reason that Ivan Pritchard said family should not be treated as a structural group. Why? Because it has a, it has a lifespan. Hmm? Individuals are born, a family may become extinct also. So then, say a clan, a clan can be considered as a group. Structure then becomes an organized combination of groups. Individuals come and go, but the group continues. And he said that processes of life and death condition the individual, but certainly not the structure. Okay. It is often said that what Radcliffe Brown referred to as the structural form was something that was referred to by Ivan Pritchard as social structure. Ivan Pritchard, we said the focus was on uh, groups and not individuals and groups that would have consistency and constancy of a kind and therefore he said that social structure is not an empirical reality. Now, having done this, we say that a group is what exactly then is a group? We said what is not a group? Okay, we said family is not a structural group. It is not a structural group because it does not have consistency, it does not have constancy. What then is a group? A group according to Ivan Richard is a congregation or a collection of people who consider themselves as distinct, as a defined definite unit in relation to other units. Does the analogy of the house now come to your mind again where we said that uh, each room is distinct, has an entity of its own and yet it is part of uh, the larger house and a house is a part of uh, say the neighborhood. Okay. So we say that a group is a co congregation of individual individuals, a uh, congregation of people which have a sense of distinction and which have a sense of uh, togetherness, oneness, identity. Okay? And they are so defined by their by other groups. So group A is defined, people in group A consider themselves to be one unit, that's all right. But people of group B consider themselves distinct from A and identify A as a group. In essence then, social structure does not remain an empirical reality. Right? This same idea of social structure not being an empirical reality was carried forward by Claude Levi Strauss, who went a few steps further. And he said that social structure is not an empirical reality, certainly, but social structure is a model. Now, I told you that Sir Herbert Spencer gave the analogy of the house and the organism to explain the concept of social structure. Okay? Levi Strauss used the analogy of language to explain social structure. How did he employ the anal analogy of language to explain social structure? Okay? He said that from a given piece of language, the linguist 
tries to derive the structure and the grammar of it which the users of the language may not even know but they use the language right which means that and we know whatever language we speak we may not know the grammar of it we may just be able to speak correctly and write correctly and when we ask each other how do you know this is correct we say oh we've grown up with it we know it right so but a linguist knows the grammar of it tries to knows what comes where how the whole logic of uh, building the sentence and constructing a paragraph right the shift then as you can see is from organic analogy and behavior to the structure of the language now ivan spichard said social structure is like language how he said the reason is that we accept that say a piece of music a piece of music can be transformed in many different ways you can sing it it can be codified written down it can be rendered through the digital mode and through many other means it is this idea of transformation from one way to another which lies at the core of structuralism and levi strauss is said to be the pioneer of structuralist school in anthropology now structuralism then accepts that the set of relations between different parts can be transformed into something different from what it was earlier and this example of the music that i example of uh, music that i just gave was actually proposed initially by uh, ivan spichard sorry edmund leach edmund leach proposed this example of music to explain uh, the basic premise of structuralism now let us see how levi strauss looks at um social structure well levi strauss says that social structure is an abstraction it is a model it is a method of study but certainly not observable not empirical the way ratliff brown had proposed and he said that it is possible and the main objective is to arrive at social structure of the entire human society remember ratliff brown was talking about social structure of different communities of smaller groups ratliff brown talks about social structure of the entire human society that's a fundamental difference between the two of them now how is that possible can we arrive at the social structure of the of entire um, human society is it possible to do that well levi strauss said that the data or the, the data for social uh, social structure is provided by social relations and by social experience so from social experience and from social relations one makes an abstraction hmm? one tries to deduce a model hmm? now obviously there will be a different model for community a there will be a different model from for community b but the objective is that objective is to compare to integrate the two models and derive a common um uh, format or a common model 
for the understanding of human society and that's what he referred to as the social structure now the here of course we say that um, social structure is not an empirical reality this same viewpoint was carried forward by was also taken up by edmund leach and i told you that edmund leach gave the example of music to explain the principles of social structure now and i will just compare in a minute the two the approach of edmund leach and the approach of uh, claude levi strauss the approach the two approaches are not very different you see levi strauss said that it is important to understand what people say and what people do okay what people say constitutes mechanical model what people do constitutes statistical model right and he said that both of these are important to arrive at an understanding of society and to derive social structure edmund leach accepted these but he only changed the terminology instead of mechanical uh, model the term that he used was jural jural rights and he talked about uh, statistical uh, norms and he said that statistical norms are more important in understanding social structure and that statistical models should be given more importance should be should be looked at with greater depth than uh, the jural ones well we now i hope um, have arrived at a general understanding of what constitutes um, social structure and in probably the next um, session not the one following this but later we could be talking about how social structure is maintained okay so with this we conclude this session thank you for being there